So this morning, this brown box arrived and it's a 3D printer. And legitimately, I don't know a single thing about this printer. So let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. Cobra Go is the latest entry level 3D printer from Anycubic. With a build volume of 220x220x250 by 220 by laid onto a beautiful PIE sheet. It's worth noting that unlike many of the other 3D printers offered by Anycubic, the Go does require some assembly. Install the T-shaped screw rod. T-shaped screw rod. So needless to say, it has been a little while since I've had to build a printer from the ground upwards. Needless to say though, Anycubic have provided a really good instruction manual, which they actually have put some really good time into that uh, to make sure that everything is easy and understood. But at $199, which is what this printer is going to be retailing for, what are you getting for your money? Let's talk about it. The Cobra Go certainly resembles, and I personally think betters its closer competitor, the Ender 3. It's the same print volume, very similar practices with regards to the way that it's assembled. There are, however, a number of notable features that the Ender 3 never had, and many spent hours and hours printing upgrades and compiling firmware for what just happened to be one of the best-selling 3D printers of all time. So the Cobra Go has very much left me wondering what the key differences really are between the stock Cobra, or is this just the best replacement for the Creality Ender 3? The Go comes in, of course, at $199, but it has some very bespoke differences from its other family of Cobras. For one, we have a redesigned hot end cover, a nod to the Cobra with its original LevIQ bed leveling probe, which once again has 25 points. Similarly, we have a single Z motor, and the filament mounting point is also at the top of the printer. A redesigned extruder shows that some thought has gone into making a budget-friendly design. However, not all is what it seems, as there are some areas of design where it very much is a case of copying faults. So just before we go any further and talk about some of those faults, I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring the content today. In fact, they've just sent me a bunch of stuff. These circuit boards here, which are going to be going into a new project that I'm going to be working on, along with these really cool little rulers. Check that out as well. If you don't know about PCBWay, check out PCBWay.com. Now, here's something you might not know about PCBWay. They have a huge list of share projects, along with all their other services they offer such as PCB manufacturing, CNC, 3D printing and injection molding. They also support the makers by allowing the makers to use their site as a platform to build and learn. Many users also share their awesome designs along with the build guides. Feeling inspired? Well why not check them out after watching this video? Shall we, uh, shall we get back to it? So over the past week I have spent quite a considerable amount of time working and playing around with this printer. And when I say repeating or copying faults, if you wind your mind back to when the Ender 3 was first released, we had an issue around the extruder clicking. I'm pretty sure you can hear that kind of clonking noise. Now I've spent hours upon hours working out and testing why I'm getting that clicking and skipping. At first I put it down to how the filament was being rooted into the extruder. From the very top you get a bend in the filament which causes resistance on the extruder gear. So I even printed a PTFE filament guide and yep, yeah, I got the same issue. So then I moved the spool down to the side and it was a little better. I reached out to my buddy Tim over at TH3D and they have an excellent guide on calibrating E-steps. Now I did my calibration via a Raspberry Pi using Octopi, but you can also use Prontoface. All the instructions can be looked at and downloaded from th3dstudio.com uh, and I suggest you definitely check them out. Links will of course be in the description. So I did the E-steps and I recalibrated them as I was getting 103. I did this several times to ensure that I had the correct E-steps. Tim also suggested that I look to change out the extruder for one of his tough extruders, which actually I do have already installed on one of my Anycubic Cobra Pluses. The other alternative from their site would be the upgraded aluminium or aluminum V2, which of course when the CR10 and Ender 3 were worth upgrading, this would have been of course your best route. So thank you very much to Tim from TH3D, make sure you check those guys out. And also while I was there, I thought I might as well check out their documentation on PID tuning. 
So PID tuning basically sets the printer to hold a set temperature throughout the printing process. It's definitely worthwhile doing on any new printer or when you're setting a printer up and calibrating. So several models later, several different types of filament, several different types of models and test cubes and anything you can throw at this thing. I've tried it and the quality still wasn't quite up to how exactly that I wanted it. Different versions of Cura. Like I say, I pretty much tried everything I could think of. Then I got into measuring the bed and looking at some of the tolerances actually on the platform. And what it turned out to be was a problem actually with the bed. Now, there are several issues again still with this printer. I'll give you an example on the Z-Rod. What will happen is as it moves up, it won't move, it won't move the right hand side exactly at the same time so you'll almost get a move up like this and then it will then kind of follow and the same is with going down as well so when you're doing bed leveling on this what you're actually finding is the bed leveling actually isn't as accurate as really it needs to be and I don't know if this is the same on all um, machines made by any cubic or certainly the ones that have got the single Z step but it's the first time I've encountered that on this kind of machine which was kind of curious really so in the end, what I ended up doing is taking the bed completely apart, stripping everything down, making sure everything was measured and then reassembling it. Then I ran a series of tests. And these tests are mainly around bed leveling and deviations in the bed. The top left and mid right are values that I took before I took the bed apart and the lower left, which is basically mainly freeze and one high corner is what I'm running now. The software that's run on Octopi also adjusts the degrees in order to get the bed completely flat. Now this should be doing that internally uh, with the type of processing that it should be doing on the bed leveling. But for some reason, I'm getting these deviations still. So needless to say, I kept trying and trying and trying and trying. So one of the important factors around kit printers is to ensure that the eccentric nuts and the extrusion is tight. I found that adjusting the eccentric nuts on the gantry did make a small difference and the left and right are lifting and the deviation is slight in height. So needless to say we have pressed on and well we've got some good results. Okay so today's tests have been performed in our form. This was the first test owl that I printed out. As you can see, there are some Z lines across here. It's quite difficult to see as this is so damn shiny, but there are some deviations across here. And then on here as well, um, there are some noticeable uh, retraction issues. Uh, next up, this was the one then we started doing the tuning. So that was PIE, PID tuning rather. And it was also um, the E-step calibration. And again, still a little bit of um, uh, retraction issues on the side of this, but not such a bad print there's a couple of very very small um, notches there that you might just be able to pick up in the right light there um, and then finally we take you on to where we are right now so with the tuning and with the profiles I've kind of set up we don't have any kind of major attraction issues uh, on the top of this model now um, there aren't too many kind of zits and spots like there um, there have been on the on the previous ones there are one or two there still um, but that's the kind of the best that I've managed to get it so far of course I did not stop there I carried on tinkering and tuning and if you go over to the Anycubic Cobra Go site on Facebook you'll find the new profile embedded in there and of course it's crazy to think that we haven't even touched on the full spec of this printer yet so we'll do that and then my final thoughts so what you know already, it's a 220 by 220 by 250 build volume with a PIE flex plate. It has an inductive probe, also a single Z motor. As we turn to the front of the unit, you can find a USB-C and small SD card slot. We have a Bowden style extruder set up here. And we obviously we've talked about that before. Adjustable X and Y belts. And what I'd go on to say is the cutest two and a half inch display screen that I've probably ever seen on any 3D printer with a menu that is very simple to follow and super easy to use. On the bottom of the printer, we do have a rather large 24 volt power supply. And inside we can find a Tri-Gorilla Gen version 3.0. The standard finesse with the Tri-Gorilla board, of course, is a 32 bit board running silent stepper motors. These are attached and non-removable. So what are my final thoughts on the Anycubic Go? 
Well, it's possible that I've had a number of problems that might be specific just to this particular 3D printer. You do, of course, run the risk of not quite getting the install and associated print quality bang on first time. Although Anycubic have provided some stunning assembly instructions. On top of this, of course, there is now an Anycubic Go Facebook site. So I would suggest you run over there and join the group. And that's where I'll be sharing profiles and helping new users. The big question is, though, of course, is it a beginner's printer? And I think it is. If you have the patience and basic understanding around putting a 3D printer together, it also serves as a great reminder that if you have indeed put it together yourself, you can then take it apart, service and maintain it when required. So my final thought is that if any cubic were looking to reinvent the Ender 3 for 2022, the Cobra Go is certainly that printer. If you have enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Maybe give us a cheeky like. The comments go in down below. I'd love to know what you think about this printer. Make sure you join up to that Facebook site. And I am going to be live streaming, I think, the weekend of the 16th with all my Anycubic printers. So make sure you check that stream out when it goes live and unleashed. We'll see you next time. I've been Sam Prentice. You've been awesome. Catch you soon. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.